All right, let's prove that any subgroup of index 2 is normal. So let H be such a subgroup of G. I'm going to let G be an element of G. So here I'm not doing representation theory anymore, so I can use a little G to be an element of a group. So if G is in G, then obviously, no, if G happens to be in H, then obviously GH is going to be equal to HG because it's just H. Um, and yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to prove that GH is equal to HG in general, and that we know is equivalent to being, uh, to having H as a normal subgroup. Uh, that's talked about in the text. So GH equals HG. Next, if G is not an H, then what do we know? What do we know about GH? We know that any that this is a subgroup of index two, so we know that there are two distinct. Uh, there are, there are only two cosets of H in G, and we know that the cosets form a partition of G. And so let's hear, we, we already know what one of these cosets is. One of these cosets is when G is an element of H, and then the cosets just H. And so if we consider some element G that's not an H, then the coset must be everything else that's in the group that's not an H. So it's just precisely G set minus H. And this is, oh, come on, don't be doing this already. Okay, there we go. We're all right. Since, since uh, this is because the index is 2. And likewise, uh, the, the same holds for right cosets. And so GH equals HG. Thus, GH equals hg for all g in g um, or equivalently h is normal in g so there we go as an example consider sn as a group uh, oh, I guess this is a good opportunity for some just random knowledge. This EG means for example. Um, I remember that because there's like a G sound in example. Like you could think of it as like egg, like an egg example. But that's how I remember that. And then IE means that is. Um, although I guess I've been using those throughout my videos. So anyways, that's what that means. Um, yeah, if you're at this point in group theory, you've probably picked up on the, I don't know, whatever. Um, consider SN. We know what the order of AN is. We know it's S, it's the order of SN over 2. That's something that we proved when we discussed AN, um, because that's just the, um, an is alternating group. Is that the even permutations or the odd permutations? I really should know that. Um, uh, for some reason, alternating... What? Whatever. Whatever it is, it is, it is what it is. It's one of the two. I should know what it is because I've been studying group theory for quite a bit. But I don't know it. So I'll, I'll look it up at some point and memorize it, but I don't know it now. Anyways, we know this. This is a fact that we know. So what does that tell us? Uh, we use Lagrange's theorem to tell us that, well, AN is obviously a subgroup, and so it's equal, and so the order of SN is equal to the order of AN times the index of AN in SN. Uh, but we have this formula for the, um, 
for the order of an. Just SN over, order of SN over 2. You multiply that by the index. So then when you multiply uh, both sides of this equation by 2 over the order of SN, we get 2, um, two equals this index. And hence, by this exercise, the result that we just proved, we know that an is normal as in Sn. So yeah, there we go. This completes our proof.